Hey guys, welcome back to Snake Limited. I'm John, and today let's talk about efficiently breeding your rodents. If you're not breeding your own rodents, if you're a smaller breeder, if you're a first time breeder, if you've been doing this for a couple years, if you're not breeding them yet, you really need to start breeding your own rodents. It makes life a lot easier. I think anybody that does it is probably very happy that, that they've done it. So I want to dive into some changes I've made recently to my rodent breeding process. Um, and we'll dive into that here in a second. But please remember to subscribe to my channel. It helps a ton. I think like 90% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So please hit the subscribe button. All right. So last year, 2022, over the summer, I had purchased two uh, rodent breeding racks. I was using all of the old, you know, DIY, build them yourself wooden racks with the cement mixing tubs and they just weren't working for me. So I first got this Freedom Breeder, which has the smaller tubs on top, uh, 20 of them, which I put my adult female rats in and I let them raise their just born litters until they get close to almost, um, let's just say, let's say they're crawlers and I move them into bigger tubs or what I was doing is when they got a little bigger, I'd move them into these bigger this is my ARS rodent rack. These are the 70 series tubs. I would move the moms with the babies into these tubs to let them grow up to, you know, either be feeder size or, um, you know, whatever I needed to use them for. At that point, what I was doing was I was using these bigger tubs. Um, I forget what these are. I think maybe they're fifties, the freedom breeders. I can't remember exactly. Um, I would put, these would be my breeding tubs. So I'd have one male rat to two female rats in these tubs. Um, that way, as soon as a female got pregnant, I would pull her out, I'd put her in one of these smaller tubs, and that would allow her to, you know, raise her young. Now, that also let me figure out which females are not having big litters. This female here, for, for example, um, if I can get her to come off her babies, she's not. I got another one here, luckily, that I think will. So this female, I don't even think she's actually feeding these babies. Um, I actually found like three or four that were dead the other day. So she has three babies in this litter. I put red tags on here, which tells me, you know what? She didn't have very good litters. I'm going to let her raise those a uh, couple babies up and then I'm gonna feed her off because you don't want to be producing rodents and wasting your water and your tub space and your rodent food on you know males and females that aren't producing big litters for you um, for example this female here who I just moved up had a pretty decent size it's only seven it's not a ton it's not a high amount I think this female here she has a bunch of babies back there and those are the females that you want to keep around um, you want to have bigger litters typically 10 to 12 is a good spot to be in seven or eight it just kind of depends on how many females I have at the time um, so those are the sizes you want to keep so I was putting the females up here when they got pregnant to figure out which females are having big litters and small litters um, I would keep one to two or one to three depending on how big the rats were down in these tubs and then on this side, it was really just moms with close to weaned size babies, um, kind of like this here, because it's easier that when these guys get a little bigger, instead of having to pull them out of the other rack over there and move them over here, it's easier just to kind of take them here, <clears throat> put them over into this tub, and then take mom and put her back on the other side. However, I just, finally located some ASFs in Pittsburgh um, and I'm going to start breeding them as well. So we are starting ASF colonies. They are going to be better suited for these smaller tubs because they don't get as big as the rats do. If you can see the size difference here, uh, these are the Freedom Breeders. Again, I think they're 50s. I don't remember exactly what size they are. And these are the 70 series tubs. They're roughly twice the size. And when you had rats in here, even one to two or one to three, these things were pretty messy when you're going in there and getting ready to clean them. So, um, 
I found it probably a better idea instead of making the 70 series rack something that um, just kind of had everything and everything. These are actually going to be my breeding tubs going forward for the Norwegian rats. So, um, you know, I have actually, I'm trying to put one to three males to females in these now because these tubs are huge. And the hoppers on these 70 series racks are actually a lot bigger than the ones on the Freedom Breeder rack. So they actually fit more foods. You're not filling up as much as well. And what this will let me do is um, these tubs won't get as dirty. I can actually slip one more female in there to have better breeding ratios. And I can still pull these rats, the females, at least up to 20 of them, and still put them up in these tubs when they're ready to give birth. Now, with rats, with Norwegian rats, I have found that to be the best and most efficient way to produce baby rats. I used to keep the females in with the males when they would breed, uh, when they would have their litters. And it was very hard at times to tell which females were only producing two or three babies. Sometimes the other females would cannibalize the other litters and eat them. Um, this reduces that issue. If I have a, a female that doesn't have big litters, I can swap her out right away, feed her off, and then I can get in another female that's actually producing bigger litters. This has been working so well that I'm actually producing too many rats right now. My freezers are kind of getting full and I'm starting to think about trying to sell some of that off because I, I have too many rats at this point. So you have the breeding tubs, you have the big breeding tubs for your Norwegians. You keep, you know, however big your tubs are, you keep one to two or one to three. Um, I didn't want to bother this mom because she was drinking some water. Um, and these big 70 series, I would say one to three is probably okay. As soon as you see that a female's pregnant, you want to separate her. You want to put her into one of the smaller tubs and allow her to, um, you know, give birth. You figure out if she's a good mom, has big litters, takes care of the babies. And if she does, you let them raise them up. I'm going to start moving those moms into these tubs at the bottom with the babies once they get a little bigger. Um, let's say... Where are you? Go back to this one. I wonder about this size. They can come out of those, those smaller tubs. These little guys here, these little crawlers. And then you are all set. That, I mean, rats, I think to me so far, have Norwegian rats have been the easiest rodents to breed. Um, I'm going to get into the mice next. The mice, I have had a heck of a time <laughs> producing a high quality <laughs> uh, mouse and a big litters of mice. So we'll get into that next. All right, so mice. This is my experience anyways. I'm actually curious with anybody that does breed mice, um, you know, what your experience has been with them. But from my experience, they're kind of like what people have told me about ASFs. Now ASFs, these are the first ones I've had. They are all still very young. They're not very big. But from what I have been told is that once you create a colony, Got these two little guys here and a couple in the back. Once you create these colonies, you can't take out the females to give birth and you can't add anything new in here because they will beat each other up and kill each other. So, um, my goal with ASFs is to eventually fill up this whole rack to be able to breed with them um, so that I have enough production because I have had some picky ball pythons um that wouldn't eat anything for me they were off food for months and now all of a sudden they will take asfs for the first time i've never fed them before i've never had asfs in here but the first time i fed them like that so asfs are here to stay um i'm gonna some people say they have better nutritional value for your snakes so they might become a bigger part of my breeding process here um but more on that later Mice, in my experience, I've been breeding them for probably two years, are very similar to ASFs in that fashion. Um, I would create bigger colonies in these bigger tubs here. Uh, I think these are also 70 series. I'd have, you know, one or two males and, you know, a bunch of females in here to allow them to breed. When I'd see the females were pregnant, I'd pull them out. I'd put them into these little lab mouse breeding tubs. They'd give birth in there. 
And then once the babies were uh, weaned, I would take the mom out, throw her back into one of these tubs, and then the babies would, you know, go elsewhere. I was not having a ton of luck when I was having the males, one or two males, breeding to a bunch of females. And to be honest, I kind of feel like I was having the same issue with rats when I first started breeding rats, you know, four years ago, was that sometimes, you know, there's only so much juice to go around um, and they weren't doing a good job of getting the other females pregnant in that colony. So what I decided to do just today as I was cleaning this all out that I had to re uh, try to give space to the ASFs was that this is after some research instead of letting the moms pulling them out of these colonies putting them here to raise their litters I decided to take each one of these tubs and put one to two one male two females in all of these tubs so instead of having the colonies over here these are just going to be their own breeding trios that way I can watch I can see who's getting pregnant how big the litters are and which ones kind of need to be pulled out I had no way of figuring out which dads were doing good here and I could tell which females weren't good moms um, ton of issues with mice and cannibalism um, even moms eating their own litters uh, whether they were um, you know pinkies or whether or not they were older mice just ready to be weaned ton of issues with cannibalism with them I don't know what that is you know their feet <laughs> I have them on Kalmbach rodent diet um, plenty of water all that stuff so I have no idea I don't have that issue with the rats at all for some reason I'm having that issue with the mice so instead of you know pulling the moms out putting them over here these are just going to be permanent um, you know this this male and two females will stay here this male and two females will stay here they'll stay here so on and so forth that way I can see you know who's working who's not to see what's going on then what I'll do when they're weaned is I will pull them out and I'll use these as sort of just like my feeder bins my goal is to hopefully up my mouse production because I only have maybe four snakes four ball pythons that eat mice but that's all they eat and I was just producing enough mice because I don't eat live mice I don't even eat frozen mice I was just producing enough mice uh, for them to eat on any given week. So I need to make sure that I'm getting better litters because the litters I was getting off of these mice, some of them were like two or three, some of them are four. The biggest I ever had was maybe eight. Um, I know you can get up to 10 or 12 with a mouse from what I've read. Um, so I'm hoping that breeding them like this maybe gets me better results because I have been wasting, I feel like, uh, a lot of resources breeding these mice and I've just been getting the bare minimum out of my production, which was the same issue I had with Norwegian rats when I started doing them. Um, when I wasn't pulling the females out of the tubs when they were pregnant, and I was leaving them in there with the male and the other females, I couldn't figure out which females <laughs> weren't breeding well and I was having an issue with cannibalism. I'm hoping that keeping these guys in their own small colonies, just of one to two, one male to two females, that it kind of makes it easier for the male to breed and make sure that he's, you know, doing a better job of uh, getting the females pregnant. And it gives them maybe a little more, a little less stress to the females that they're just gonna stay with their little groups of three. Um, so I just started that today. I'm hoping that it works. Um, those of you that have bred mice before, please comment below and let me know how successful you've been with breeding mice and what your process for doing it has been. Um, whether or not you keep them in bigger colonies or whether or not you keep them in small colonies like I'm trying now. Um, you know, I'm trying to do this as efficiently as possible, but with the mouse's rodents all the rodents health in mind 
Um, and I know they're being sold off as food, or not sold off, but fed off just to be food, they're not pets or anything. But um, I wanna make sure they're living in good conditions. I don't try to shove, um, you know, I'm not trying to put like five males in here and 30 females and just hoping that, you know, 50% uh, of them get pregnant. I'm trying to make sure that like I'm making livable conditions for these rodents. Um, you know, giving some respect <laughs> to their to their lives. So, um, you know, don't tell me that you just throw 40 in a tub and you just hope something works. If you have um, had a lot of success breeding them in a, you know, more humane fashion, let me know. Um, because I'm curious to see what you guys have done that's been successful with mice. Because so far, like I said, I've just been getting the bare minimum of what I need to feed my four snakes that take uh, mice. Um, I'm hoping this change I made kind of fixes that, but um, let me know down below what you guys have been doing. Last but not least, let's talk about ASFs. So I just recently joined um, Mutation Creations uh, Patreon, oh, Billy Rose, and a lot of the folks there have been, you know, praising uh, ASFs, using them permanently and solely for the purposes of feeding their ball pythons. Um, apparently, <clears throat> when they are adults, they only get to the size of like a small rat, which is perfect because most ball pythons can't take a medium large, or definitely not a large size. Most of them can't take medium sized rats because they get pretty darn big. I, I mean, I think a lot of these breeders, let's see what I got. Like these females, because they maybe just have litter, so this is actually a male. Um, that's probably a medium sized rat. That's probably the biggest they'll be able to take. But if you can see this male right here, he is huge. Um, he's a, these are actually all, like leftover males I have. They're big, <laughs> big rats. Um, none of my ball pythons will be able to take those down. And if they could, it would be dangerous because once they're that size, they can inflict a pretty big wound on your ball python if they sink their teeth in them as they wrap them up. So the ASFs, they probably, now I have never actually seen an adult ASF because you can't find them around here. <laughs> um, but from what I understand, so an adult ASF, uh, people have told me have been like the equivalent of a small rat. Um, so I would consider these small rats. Um, let's see. You know, if you look here, can fit in my hand easily. They're not huge, not huge guys. So ASFs get about that size, which for a ball python, I'm fine with. Um, they're also supposed to have better nutritional content. They're seeing that their ball pythons aren't, don't look as fat. They look a little more lean, which is good for me. Um, so I have finally found uh, a, a, a rodent breeder in this area that produces them, um, a lot of them that uh, will sell you females and that will sell you females and not try to price gouge you. The one time in the past couple years I was able to find somebody, <clears throat> they wanted like 60 or $70 for like 1.3 ASFs. This guy was just charging a flat rate of like 250 for these smalls that I bought for each for each uh, ASF. So I just bought, I think I spent 70 bucks with him maybe. And then I actually went to a reptile show this last weekend and, and bought 20 more because I needed some feeders. Um, and my intention was to just feed them, but I don't know if they did this on purpose or accident, but they actually threw in a bunch of females. Um, so I actually ended up keeping those. So now what I do, what I'm going to start doing is I broke these up. So there's one male to, well, I think there's five females in there, but I'm trying to do one to four in these tubs. And here they are. So I'm going to eventually fill up this whole rack with one to four. As you can see, they're pretty stinking small still right now. Um, so this whole bottom section of this Freedom Breeder rack is gonna be ASFs. Now I have this female, who I can finally, I think, move back into a bigger tub. Um, I moved her into the small tub trying to get anything to work for her. She's like 800 grams. 
Um, but she refused to eat anything for like four months. Um, and she's a pied desert ghost. So, um, when I got the ASFs two weeks ago, she started eating. She's eaten four of them since then. Now they're super tiny still. Um, but she has been feeding on them without any issues. I have another female that hadn't eaten for me consistently for like over a year. Um, she was like basically at breeding size last season and just kind of went off food. <laughs> so I never ended up breeding her. Um, two weeks in a row. Took ASFs. Um, so my issue now is that these grow up a little slower than rats do. Um, I think these, I've had these already for two weeks and they were pretty small when I got them. And as you can see, they're still not very big. Um, so by the time these actually grow up and start breeding, it's probably going to be a while. But some of the people I've talked to said these guys can have huge litters, like over 20, which is unheard of. I've had a rat maybe get 16 or 17 before, but they're saying that some of these can produce over 20 babies. So, um, you know, I am trying to kind of blow up my ASF production here. Um, if it's truly healthier for the ball pythons, I may basically move over all my holdbacks and my adults to being on ASFs. Um, they take up less space. They're apparently less stinky than Norwegian rats as well. Um, and I don't have to worry about the issue with them getting too big because these larger rats, um, when they have to get retired, I don't have anything that can eat them right now. I have three blood pythons, but they're still very small. My boa constrictor is still too small to eat jumbo rats or even large rats probably. I can probably take a medium rat okay. Um, so I have a freezer that I'm starting to accumulate big old breeding rats that nobody can take down at this point. Um, so if I can kind of stop feeding a ton of food to big Norwegians and I can start, you know, breeding these guys and, um, you know, they get the size of a small rat and I never have to worry about them getting too big ever again. Plus, they have better nutritional value, supposedly. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I've always been a rat guy. Um, they get big quick, um, but they smell, <laughs> they smell really bad. They eat a lot of food. Um, so I'm thinking of that I might be going ASF permanently once I'm able to get these colonies going. Now, the ASFs, just like the mice in my experience, Everybody has told me you cannot, you know, switch around the colonies once you get them. You have to establish the colony, leave it there. You can't take anything out. You can't put it back in. So I'm hoping that these tubs are big enough for, you know, the five adults plus the litters as they pop up. Um, so I'm not running into any issues with, you know, crowding or anything like that. This little guy just big eyes and his little pointy nose. I'll get back in there. No, no, no. Um... I'm hoping I don't run into overcrowding like that. Now, I've never had an issue with the Norwegians with taking a female out, putting her in these bins to uh, give birth, and then putting her back with, it doesn't even matter which you know set I put her in. If I pulled her out of here, and then I move her over here to breed, and then put her back down here with these other rats, they don't care. I've never had an issue with the Norwegians um, bullying anybody, being anybody up and I've never found a dead rat ever. Um, if I do that with mice, <laughs> there's a good chance that you're gonna find a mice, a mouse in a day or two that's gonna be severely beat up or dead. Um, they're very, they're brutal, <laughs> they're very brutal. And I'm not gonna try that with ASFs uh, because I've been told the same thing. So, as far as efficiency goes, um, I'm working with the mice and that's why I want your comments down below. Um, those of you that have had really good experience breeding mice, what's the most efficient way you found to do it that yields you the best result? Um, from my experience, what I can tell you is that with rats, Norwegian rats, you put one to two or one to three females, however big your bins are that you can fit them in. As soon as you see the female get pregnant, put her in her own bin, put her in these small bins. If you have these, uh, like 
these lab bins that you get for rep Reptile Basics. This is like the large rat breeding bin. This is perfect for a mom to have her litter um, and to, you know, wean them off. And then, again, you take them out of that tub and you put all the, you know, wean rats somewhere else. Those little tubs are perfect for that if you can't afford to get an ARS or a Freedom Breeder um, and you can't build a bunch of the DIY ones. I mean, you can get a shelving unit like this for 150 bucks from Sam's Club or Costco. You know, you can buy these buckets from Reptile Basics, the water tubes, <laughs> they're like super cheap. Um, I think these are 30 bucks a piece, which is not cheap, but they work really well. The issues you have with the DIY racks um, is that those masonry tubs have like that little kind of keyhole in the front of it. And sooner or later, somebody's gonna start chewing. Um, if you catch it, you're lucky. If you don't, you have 15 rats get loose all over, the, all over your house or wherever you keep them. So they sucked. I got tired of it. Um, I used those for four years until I invested in these. And I am so happy <laughs> that I put the extra money into getting these professional rodent racks. They look a lot nicer. Um, I prefer the ARS rack. And it also matches my ARS snake racks. So I'm not going to get rid of the Freedom Breeder one, I don't think, at least not yet, because I like that it has the two different size tubs. It's the reason that I chose the Freedom Breeder over the ARS originally. I actually bought this first because it allowed me to put the adults and the moms in here. Um, but I just like the finish of the ARS one better. I like the powder coating. It's welded better, in my opinion. I like the look of the powder coating. Um, I didn't slice my hand open building this like I did like I did on the Freedom Breeder one. Um, so, you know, but they, they've been awesome. They've made life a lot easier, uh, you know, as you're breeding your rodents. Um, so that's it. You know, I please, if you have any questions, ask down below. Um, if you aren't breeding your rodents yet, you probably should. If you only have a handful of snakes, you still might want to make one of those DIY racks. Breed a couple rats, breed a couple ASFs just to get a hang of it. Um, figure out what works best for you. But it makes life a lot easier than trying to rely on somebody else to get you your rodents or having to buy them from the pet store because they price gouge you like crazy. Um, so thank you guys for stopping by. Again, comment below and we'll see you next time.